Welcome to St Francis Church for our online service. In today's service, we're going to be exploring the theme of all saints. We're going to be thinking about hope. We're going to be thinking about light. And to begin with, I want to say a few words from Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is, my, is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? We all face challenges. We all have things that we fear. Here, right at the beginning of Psalm 27, the psalmist says that the Lord is the one who is the light. The Lord is the stronghold. The Lord is the one that helps us in our fear. With God, we have all that we need. There may be things this week that you face that have been really challenging or things that you know you're going to face that are challenging. Right at the beginning of the service, let's put our hope in God. Let's put our lives into his hand. Let's pray. Lord, would you be our light? Would you be our stronghold? Would you be our salvation? We place ourselves into your hands. We place this day, we place this coming week into your hands asking for your protection, your help, your healing, your deliverance. And would you, by your spirit, help us now to worship you in spirit and in truth. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
Living the Christian life is wonderful, but also really challenging. It's like every day and every hour of every day and even every minute of every day, we do things that are not as we would like them to be. On this All Saints Day, we perhaps think of those who've gone before us that have done it so much better than us. Maybe they've had so much better faith. Maybe they've lived a much purer life, much more focused and much more committed. And we look at our lives and we feel so weak and feeble but we go to the same God for the same help. So let's get ready for confession. Since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, looking to Jesus in penitence and faith. We say together, Almighty God, long-suffering and of great goodness, I confess to you, I confess with my whole heart, my neglect and forgetfulness of your commandments, my wrongdoing, thinking and speaking, the hurts I've done to others and the good I've left undone. O oh God, forgive me for I've sinned against you and raise me to newness of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So may the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And the prayer for this All Saints Day. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect into one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those inexpressible joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>
Today's reading is from John chapter 11 verses 32 to 44. It tells how Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odour for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, Take off the grave clothes and let him go. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I wonder what is your favourite season? I know lots of people will naturally say spring because it's full of hope and life or summer because it's warm and there's holidays. Some people choose winter because of the snow, which doesn't happen that much in Doncaster. And many will choose autumn. They love the walks and the autumn sunshine, I get that. They love looking at the beautiful trees as the leaves change colour. They like the autumn activities, the bonfires, the, the hot chocolates and all, all kinds of fun things that happen during the season. I like all of that, but I must admit, I do struggle with aspects of autumn. I struggle with when the clocks go back. I don't like it when the nights are longer and the days are shorter. I don't like it when it begins to get colder. And 
in this season, I have to really focus on the hope that even though winter is to come, spring is coming afterwards. There will be more light. There will be more warmth coming. And whenever we go through a season of life that feels like it's autumn or winter, whenever we go through real strong challenges in life, it's always important to hold on to hope that it won't always be like this. A better day is coming. Sometimes that better day is in a week or two's time or a day or two's time or in a year or two's time. And sometimes it's, it's many years down and sometimes it's not until eternity. But we, as people, we need to hold on to hope. If we can hold on to hope, we can keep going. Whenever um, people have done research into people that are prisoners um, in normal prisons or in um, prisoner of war type prisons, they've always said that the ones that do better, the ones that survive better, are those that are able to hold on to hope. Those that recognise the situation is hard, they're not being unrealistic about the situation, but they know that there is potential of a better day to come. In our Bible passage today on this All Saints Day, we look at Mary and Martha and how they hold on to hope in the depth of despair and how we can also do that in the, the challenging things that we face in life. And we also get to look at the most amazing miracle that Jesus did, the raising of Lazarus. So it's John chapter 11. And it, it's just wonderful. I love it. It starts with, with something of a challenge. Lazarus and Mary and Martha are, are friends of Jesus. He often visited them, stayed with them. They, they just enjoyed each other's company. Jesus is not with them. But they know where he is and they send message to Jesus to say that your friend Lazarus is ill. And they're only sending message like that, not because he's got a cough or a cold, but because he's got something that is, is life threatening. They're really worried about him. But they know that Jesus is the one who, who has healed so many people. If only Jesus will come straight back, then he will be healed. So as they're sending the message, I, I guess they're filled with hope. They know Jesus personally. They know that Jesus is, is their friend and, and surely he will come back straight away. Jesus, when he gets the news, seems to know instantly that even though perhaps his natural desire is to rush back, his sense of God's will for him is not to. That's tough for Jesus. But he's determined to do what his father is showing him to do. Now is not the time for him to rush straight back. When he finally does head back, he's already heard the news that Lazarus has died. He says he's going there to wake him up. He's saying that Lazarus is asleep and I'm going to wake him up. The disciples have no idea what he's talking about. When they get there, they know and Jesus has said that Lazarus is dead. They get there and they hit a scene of mourning. Martha, when she hears that Jesus is, has come, she rushes out to see him. You can imagine the, the frustration that she felt that he didn't come in time. Lazarus has been dead four days. Jesus has come at least four days too late in her mind. And she says that she doesn't hold back. If you'd been here, my brother would not have died. That's why I sent news to you, she's surely thinking. That's why we sent the message, because we knew that you could help. Now he's been dead four days. But then she says something really remarkable. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Even now. What a statement, what a phrase for us to hold on to when we are facing um, situations that seem absolutely hopeless, when it seems totally too late. When Jesus is around, even now, the situation can change. The most desperate situation can be changed in the twinkling of an eye if we ask Jesus. Doesn't mean he'll always do everything we ask. But there's always a chance, there's always a hope that a situation can change. Even now, God will give you whatever you ask of him. 
Jesus knows that she's thinking and asking, will you raise him from the dead? And he says, he will rise again. Martha thinks he's talking about the resurrection at the end of time. And she says, well, I know that. I believe in the resurrection of the dead. I believe that there is a day when the dead will rise and we'll get our resurrection bodies. But he says, well, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the one that brings resurrection. I am the one that brings life. Believe in me, and even though you die, you will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She doesn't directly say <coughs> yes or no to that, but she says, I believe you are the Messiah. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe that all things are possible, effectively, she's saying. All things are possible with you. She then goes and gets her sister Mary. She explains that Jesus is there. Mary comes out and she is so overwhelmed in seeing Jesus. Perhaps the frustration spills over. She kneels at Jesus' feet and says a similar thing that Martha said. Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. She's got the faith that Jesus could have stopped, could have stopped this death happening, could have healed him. She's weeping. Jesus sees her weeping. He sees the frustration. He sees the pain. And he is filled with compassion. He also weeps. He is also in pain. And if you're in the middle of a situation at the moment that is so painful, we need to remember Jesus sees it. Jesus feels pain just like we feel pain. If he sees us hurting, he hurts. Jesus then says, where have you laid him? They said, come and see. Jesus weeps and they say, see how he loved him. They come to the tomb. Jesus says, take away the stone. But Martha says, but there's already a stench because he's been dead four days. Jesus says, didn't I not tell you that if you believed you'd see the glory of God? That stench is nothing compared to what Jesus can do. He can deal with that. He can deal with the stench. He can deal with a dead body. He can bring life. He can bring hope where there isn't hope normally. So they took away the stone. Jesus looked up. He prays this prayer so that everyone can hear him. And then he says these three words in a loud voice. Lazarus, come out. And then remarkably, the passage says, the dead man, who was no longer dead, came out. His hands and his feet were bound with strips of cloth. His face was wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Jesus brought life from the dead. He brought life where there was no life. He brought hope where there was no hope. He, he came, even though it seemed as if it was too late, it wasn't too late for Jesus. I wonder what situation you're going through at the moment that feels as if it's too late. It feels as if there is no hope. It feels like, how can this situation change? How can there possibly be a turnaround? With Jesus, anything is possible. Like Martha, we can pray, but even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Even now, Jesus, I know that you can change this situation. We can be like Mary, who expresses to Jesus how challenging a situation is that we face, how hard it is. Like Mary and Martha, we can hold on to the hope that Jesus is the one that can change any situation. He is the one who is with us and compassionate and caring for us in our grief and in our pain. And he is the one that can transform our grief and pain, bringing healing, bringing life, bringing hope, bringing transformation to this world. On this All Saints Day, we remember those that have gone before us, those that have held on to the light, held on to the hope, many of them through very, very dark times. They kept going. They are now with Jesus in glory, in joy, in peace, in love. We look forward to the day when we will be not only united with Jesus, 
but, and Father God and Holy Spirit, but also united with those that have gone before us. Whether that is us going to heaven or whether it's the time for heaven to come to earth. We know that there is a reuniting. We know that all things are going to be made right. <coughs> we know that the situations that seem so wrong and are so wrong will one day be made right. We need to be people that hold on to hope, not allowing despair and darkness to get the upper hand. But even in our hardest situations, we hold on to the hope that Jesus can change it, that we pray each day for Jesus to change the situation. And we pray each day for Jesus to change us, for him to sit with us in the darkness to walk with us in the darkness, to strengthen us as we walk in darkness, that we can walk towards light. On this All Saints Day, let us be people that know that we are never alone. Let us be people that know that we are never without hope. If we've got Jesus, we've got hope, we've got life, we've got resurrection. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, would you come and fill us with your spirit? Fill us with your life-giving spirit. Bring us life. Bring us hope. Where we feel dark, bring your light. Where we feel that situation is hopeless, give us faith. Help us, we pray. Help us to bring light and life to others as well. Amen.
let's now express our commitment to the God who changes situations, the God who is with us, the God who loves us. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, the source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. These words are merely those of David Adam, one-time vicar of Lindisfarne. When I say, Lord, please respond, your kingdom come. In the stillness of each morning, in each day as it is newly dawning, O Lord, your kingdom come. In your church, in our singing, in our prayers that we are bringing, O Lord, your kingdom come. In a world that cries for peace, to the earth that wars may cease. O Lord, your kingdom come. In our hearts and our wills, to our lives which the Spirit fills. O Lord, your kingdom come. To the lonely and the sad, to the tortured and driven mad. O Lord, your kingdom come. To all who have lost hope today, to all who are too ill to pray, O oh Lord, your kingdom come. And finally, in a short time of silence, let each of us pray for the cherished people in our families, in our places of work and leisure, and here in our parish of St Francis. Inspire them and help to choose the light of Christ. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
And so in whatever situation we find ourselves in, whatever dark situation, whatever challenging situation we face, we know that Jesus is compassionate. He is kind. He weeps when we weep. He hurts when we hurt. But we know that Jesus is also one who has power to change the situation. When we know Jesus, we always have hope. Hope that the situation can be transformed in an instant. And hope that one day, every challenge, every wrong, every injustice will be transformed and the world made once more perfect. We are people of hope. We are people of the light. Let us hold on to our faith. Let us hold on to hope as we go into this week. Now the blessing. God, who has prepared for us a city with eternal foundations, give you grace to share the inheritance of the saints in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and always. Amen. Have a great week.